My parents always wanted me to wear a bike helmet when I was a kid because, you know, it keeps me alive. But I never wanted to. It was big and ugly and made my hair look funny. But there are people trying to solve that. We're here at the Polytechnic Institute at NYU to talk to Dr. Nikhil Gupta, who's worked on helmets for Olympians, the military, athletes of all kinds. And basically his goal is to make the safest, best looking, lightest, coolest helmet on the planet. And it all starts with foam. So, okay, so first, uh, sort of at a very broad level, what, what happens in this lab? What are you guys working on in here? Well, we work on understanding how materials absorb energy, and that's a very important application when you look at helmets. Mm -hmm. You are looking at a very small space in which a lot of energy has to be absorbed. We don't work on individual products. We mainly work on developing materials mm -hmm. and uh, finding out what kind of uh, loading conditions those materials will be working well in. Mm -hmm. So we have six different kinds here, right? So what, what differentiates, I guess, sort of, you know, my, my scientific knowledge is mm -hmm. lacking. So what, what differentiates sort of one foam from the next? So there are a few things that you can look at the foams. If you look closely that the cell size of these foams is different. That mm -hmm. means how big the pores are right. in these foams. And that kind of determines the density of these materials. Okay. And uh, how much energy they would absorb uh, is related to the density of a foam. Mm -hmm. The denser the foam is, it may absorb more energy compared to a much more lighter sure. weight foams. Okay. But now we have new methods of making foams lighter, but increasing their energy absorption capability. Mm -hmm. So some of these fancy foams, not these ones, but the ones that we are working in developing new ones, might actually involve things like carbon nanotubes or nanofibers. Interesting. So which keep the foams low density, but at the same time they absorb a lot more energy mm -hmm. than the traditional foams. Dr. Gupta told us that what he's testing isn't how aerodynamic your helmet is or how cool it looks. He's not testing any particular helmet at all. He's focused on foam, every kind of foam you can imagine and about 10,000 other kinds too. Foam is the backbone of your helmet. It's what absorbs the impact when you fall off your bike or get punched in the head. And depending on what you're doing, you need something very different. In his lab, Dr. Gupta tests the power of foam over and over. He's constantly trying to find how much of a beating a certain type can take. What if there's a pebble flying at it at 100 miles an hour? Or if you're on your bike skidding along the ground on a hot summer day, what happens then? Dr. Gupta knows the effects of temperature, vibration, and time. He also knows what happens if you fire a gun at it. In terms of its ratio of density to strength, the foam he makes can be stronger than steel. Of course, everyone needs different foam, though. Dense foam is heavy foam, and dense foam might not be what protects us best anyway. Dr. Gupta works with the military and Olympians and regular people like me. He's designing armor for the military that's both incredibly light and incredibly strong. He's worked with Olympic boxers who need a helmet that will take repeated abuse. He's also worked with equestrians who need to be able to fall off a horse and survive. Those riders need a helmet that will take huge impact once rather than lesser impact over time. Or Olympic cyclists who spill off their bikes at huge speed and skid along the ground. Each needs a different kind of foam for a different kind of impact. Dr. Gupta is making sure helmets do what they really have to do, keep us safe.